Getting a plane to land safely at an airport is a delicate process. The aviation industry spent decades developing optimal, consistent and safe procedures for pilots to follow in landing their aircraft. In the morning of April 19, 2000, this relationship between the plane and the airport broke down as Air Philippines Flight 541 crashed on its approach into Davao City. The accident still to this day is the deadliest aviation incident to occur in the Philippines killing 131 people. Just what decisions made by the flight crew contributed to this accident? Air Philippines was the subsidiary of the Filipino national air carrier Philippine Airlines. The airline has been rebranded numerous times throughout its history, but its purpose is to serve as the regional department for Philippine Airlines, flying domestic routes mainly out of the country's capital, Manila. These days, the airline is branded under PAL Express. The Philippines was seeing a large expansion of its aviation sector around this time at the turn of the millennium. Low-cost carriers such as Cebu Pacific had begun flying a few years prior and saw major success. In 2000, Air Philippines operated a mix of both jet and propeller aircraft, utilizing Japanese-built Namco YS-11s and American-built Boeing 737s. It was the 200 variant of the 737 that Air Philippines operated at the time of the accident of Flight 541. The accident plane itself was operated by Southwest Airlines in the United States before being sold to Air Philippines. Flight 541 was a morning flight between Manila and Davao City, located a few hundred miles south. At 5.30 in the morning of April 19, 2000, Air Philippines Flight 541 left Manila with 131 passengers and crew on board. It's the start of the Easter holidays and transportation across the Philippines is crowded. Flying the plane that morning was Captain Estraton Villasmino Catape, a pilot of over 30 years experience. He was the youngest pilot to serve for Philippine Airlines in the 1960s. He had been flying planes for more than his co-pilot's entire life. Captain Don Sardala was acting as co-pilot despite being a captain himself at just 22 years old. The flight was a route check which required captain training with a pilot flying and a pilot monitoring. The majority of the flight was uneventful. It was the approach segment of the flight which needs closer analysis. Davao City is located on the south side of the island of Mindanao. The city itself is one of the largest in the Philippines. The airport here is only small, featuring a single runway with a single apron area for aircraft. Despite this, the airport still sees considerable air traffic for its size. On the morning of April 19, 2000, aircraft were making approaches from the southwest over the city to land on runway 05. Weather that morning was poor, with a low cloud ceiling of just a few hundred feet, making it hard for pilots to see the ground. However, with the help of the airport's ILS and radio navigation, the flight crew were able to simply navigate to the airport in this poor weather. Flight 541 was not the only aircraft heading to Davao City that morning. Another flight ahead of the Air Philippines plane was also making an approach onto the same runway, a Philippine Airlines Airbus A319 performing the same route. To maintain appropriate spacing, it was necessary to allow this plane to land first and vacate the runway before Flight 41 would make their landing. As Air Philippines Flight 541 broke out from underneath the cloud layer, the Philippine Airlines Airbus was observed on the ground and had not vacated the runway yet. The pilot flying then advised ATC of their intention to perform a 360 degree turn. This would provide enough spacing and enough time for the other plane to vacate the runway. This action was not discussed between the two pilots, as the pilot monitoring then told ATC that they would perform a completely different maneuver. It should be noted that at the time in the Philippines, crew resource management was not a necessary part of the flight training. Captain Catape did not have any CRM training, but regulations stated that he didn't need to. The pilot monitoring requested to make a turn to the right as a go-around or missed approach. The pilots ultimately decided on this and initiated their missed approach. We should now discuss the missed approach procedure at Davao Airport. If a plane on approach to runway 05 is to make a missed approach, the pilots must fly a heading of 020 in a left turn and initiate a climb to 4000 feet. From there, a plane would be vectored back around 
and would likely establish a new final approach. Missed approaches are a common practice in aviation. It happens every day all over the world. In the weather conditions at Davao City that morning, the use of the aircraft's onboard instruments to navigate would have been essential given the fact that Flight 541 would re-enter the cloud. The pilot monitoring when they announced their intentions to turn right to ATC, this was going against the standard left turn procedure. This action would take Flight 541 over the island of Samal. Instead of utilizing instrument flying and instrument meteorological conditions as they should have, they instead tried to fly using visual flight rules over VFR. Those in aviation will easily recognize this as a highly dangerous action. The pilots would hand fly their plane in low clouds for their missed approach, even despite the fact that visual landings had been suspended at the airport just several minutes prior. It was decided the pilots would try an approach on the reciprocal runway, runway 23. For this, the pilots requested a BOR DME approach. This type of approach can provide lateral guidance, but won't give any help in terms of altitude. In their turn to the right, Flight 541 re-enters the cloud. The flight crew cannot see anything out of their window, only clouds. The Boeing 737's Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, then sounded indicating the plane was dangerously close to terrain. Flight 541 was heading towards a coconut plantation on Samal Island, to which the pilots could not see. This aircraft had an old version of the Ground Proximity Warning System installed on it. In this situation, it only provided the pilots with a time frame of just 4 seconds between its sounding and the imminent impact with terrain. After the 1996 crash of American Airlines Flight 965 in Colombia, a new Ground Proximity Warning System was to be developed. The Axton aircraft's previous owner, Southwest Airlines, did not install the newer system instead choosing to retire the aircraft. The plane was sold to a leasing company, to which Air Philippines leased it from this company, who also had not gotten round to installing the upgraded GPWS either, to which this could have provided a warning of up to 45 seconds before impact. Villagers living on Samal Island noted the Air Philippines plane was flying low to the ground. Flight 541 had incidentally not gained any significant altitude, flying at just a few hundred feet after its first descent to the airport. Once making their missed approach, the flight crew should have taken their plane to a higher altitude almost immediately. If they had, Flight 541 would have been at an altitude in excess of 1500 feet at this point. The Boeing 737 struck a coconut tree at just 570 feet of altitude, tearing off part of the plane's wings. From this initial impact, the aircraft crashed into a hillside on Samal Island, where it disintegrated into a coconut plantation. In the flight's final moments, it was noted by locals the pilots powered up the plane's engines and began pulling the nose back to climb shortly before impact. Once the plane struck the tree, the plane's aerodynamics shifted immediately, leaving it uncontrollable. The crash of Philippine Airlines Flight 541 claimed the lives of 131 people. To the disappointment of investigators, the flight data recorder was damaged beyond any kind of recovery, but the voice recorder did yield some results, albeit only the final 15 minutes of the flight. The accident became the deadliest aviation incident to ever occur in the Philippines, to which it still is to this day. It had been a hard week for the country, because as it turned out, this crash was the third major transport disaster to occur that week. While weather may have played a contributing role in this disaster, it was ruled that pilot error was at fault. In the aftermath, crew resource management training became standard in the Philippines a year later. As the aircraft was leased to Air Philippines, the leasing company was criticized for not installing the upgraded ground proximity warning system on the accident plane, a piece of technology which would have cost just pennies per passenger ticket over the many flights it would continue to take. There were other problems with the Air Philippines airline which were later revealed, such as flight crews being rushed to fill out paperwork, including load sheets and performance calculations. Some airline employees, including apron staff, were not encouraged to wear hearing protection. Air Philippines would rebrand multiple times in the following years, in 2008, 2010, and most recently in 2013, under Philippine Airlines Express, to which it remains to this day, without the use of old and antiquated aircraft. Since 2000, 
there has not been a fatal incident at Philippine Airlines or its PAL Express subsidiary. Hello everyone and welcome to the end of the video. I've just arrived back from my holiday and I'm back at work for the next video. If you did find this video to be interesting, be sure to like and subscribe as there's always a new video every Saturday. It is that time of the week where I must thank my incredible patrons for their support. If you would like to have your name featured or read out at the end of the next video, you can join the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from £3 per month and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. Thank you to my £5 tier patrons, Avery Teoda, Erin Wilson, Hector Palmatellas, Ken Zachman, Kevin Connors, Christy, Leon San Jennings, Marie Ennis, MG, Pac-Man 7, Panic Chicken, Rebecca Rivers, Surya Melody, Sleepy, a new joiner to the Patreon, So FP, and Sue So Sue Shoes. Special thanks to my generous £10 tier patrons, Aidan Montgomery, Alex, Alex Keller, Anne Sid, Daniel Hendricks, Derek Bean, Karma, Mike Milton, Side Effect, Roger Mayer, and Where Are My Cheetos. Thank you all so much for the amazing support. That is it for me this week. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.